In this video, we're going to look at general algorithms and flowcharts. An algorithm is simply a set of instructions. So in everyday life, we see algorithms. An example might be baking a pizza. We will be given a finite set of instructions and an order in which to carry them out. So it might be to mix the dough, knead the dough, roll the dough, spread the tomato sauce, add the cheese, add the topping. Turn the oven on, put the pizza in and so on and so forth. So that's an example of an algorithm. It's a set of instructions we need to carry out in a specific order. In this particular module, we're going to look at mathematical algorithms. Often they'll be in the form of a flowchart and we will need to complete a trace table. So let's start off with some basics. When we're given a flowchart, these are some of the symbols we might see. The oval now denotes the start and finish. So an oval or a rounded rectangle gives us the start and finish. The flow line connects these symbols, so we might have the flow line from the start to the rectangle. The rectangle is an instruction, so it might be let A be equal to 2B. The diamond is a decision. We might be asked, is A greater than 0? We'd have a flow line coming off saying yes, we'd have a flow line coming off and saying no, and we need to make that decision. So start, finish, connection, instruction, decision. So let's look at a basic algorithm and work through it. It says an algorithm is described by the flow chart shown above. So I've put it just here so we can work alongside. It's often hard scrolling back and forth with these. In part A, it says given x is equal to 54 and y is equal to 63, complete the table below to show the results obtained at each step when the algorithm is applied. You may not need to use all of these rows. It may not be necessary to complete all boxes in each row. So let's start off. This is now saying the start. It says here, let A be equal to zero. This is an instruction. So all I'm going to do is write that A is equal to zero. We've now got another instruction. We're asked to input X and Y. Well, X is 54, so that can come in here, and then Y is going to be 63. We then come down after we've input X and Y, and we're asked to make a decision. We're asked to say if X is odd or even. Is X even? So is X even? Yes, it is. Generally, we simply put Y. I like to put a little tick, but you don't have to. Now, I've said that it's yes. At this stage, I don't need to fill out my, this box here. So I'm going to go straight down, and we've got now another instruction. I'm told to let X be equal to X divided by 2. That's not too clear, but that says x divided by 2. So let's go ahead and do that. So in the next line of a table, I'm going to let x be equal to x divided by 2. So 27 is x divided by 2. We're now told to let y be equal to 2y. This now is another instruction as we've got a rectangle. So if I double this up, that will give me 1, 2, 6. We then follow these flow lines. So I'm coming back around here. We're asked now, is x even? A decision I need to make. Well, we can see now that x is 27, so it's not. So I write no. This time, we need to follow the flow line that says no. And we're told this instruction to let a be equal to a plus y. Well, a is naught, y is 1, 2, 6. So in the next row, I'm going to put 1, 2, 6. So I'm filling out the next row now. We're then told to let x be equal to x minus 1. Well, that's going to be 27 minus 1, which is 26. We now have to make the decision, and we're asked, is x equal to 0? So I come right across to here. The answer is no, it's not equal to 0. So at this stage, after that decision is made, I go left, and I follow now the flow line that says no. So we now let x be equal to x divided by 2. So on the next line, I'm going to let x be equal to x divided by 2, which is 13. We now need to let y be equal to 2y. So if I double this up, that's going to give me 2, 5, 2. I now follow the flow line round. We're asked, is x even? The answer here now is x is going to be 13. The answer is no. So I put across or just write no. So it's not even. So we now need to let a be equal to a plus y. So again, I'm not filling out this box here. So what we've got is now the requirement to add a to y. So 126 plus 252 
is going to give me 378. So let's write this in here. We're going to get 378. We now need to let x be equal to x minus 1. Well, x was 13, so on this line just here, I'm going to write now that this is going to be 13 minus 1, which is 12. We're asked now, is x equal to 0? The answer is quite clearly no. It's equal to 12. I now come across. I let x be equal to x divided by 2. So on the next row, x divided by 2 is going to be 6. I now need to let y be equal to 2y, so that's going to be 504. So we end up now with 504. We come round, we follow the flow line, we're asked, is x even? Yes, it is. So I'm going to put a little y in here. So we come down this way. We now need to let x be equal to x divided by 2. So I'm coming straight down to this line here, and that's 3. We let y be equal to 2y. So that's going to give me 1,008. So all I'm doing is simply following the algorithm. We come back round, we come back, we ask the decision, is x even? The answer is no, 3 is not even, it's odd. So I put no. So we now go right, we let a be equal to a plus y. So I need to add these two right here. So if I add these two, I'm going to get 1,386. So 1, 3, and then we're going to have 8, 6. So all I've done is now let a be equal to a plus y. That is an instruction. I need to carry that out. So 1, 3, 8, 6. We're told now to let x be equal to x minus 1, which is going to be 2. We're now asked, is x naught? So we're going straight across here. So what we say is no. And you can see this pattern happening now. You can see these lines are looking similar. So we said that it's no, we need to let x be equal to x divided by 2, so that's going to now be 1. So we let y be equal to 2y, and if I double this up, I'm going to get 2016. We follow this round, we're asked, is x even? The answer is no, it's odd, so we write no, it's odd. Therefore, we now let a be equal to a plus y. So we need to add these. So that's like going to give me 2,402. Uh, so 3,402. 3, so we're going to get to now 3,402. We let x be equal to x minus 1, which is going to give me 0. We're asked now, is x equal to 0? So we come across here, and yes, it is. So what I'm going to say is, yes, it is. We now follow this down. Yes, it is. So we're going to output A. So that's going to be 3402. And I'm going to write now, at the end, we've stopped. So I'm going to put now that A is equal to 3402. We're now asked to state what the algorithm achieves. Now, you might have seen, as you're going through this, what it's going to do. If you can't spot that, think of all of the logical things that could happen. If we consider these two numbers, 3402 is the product of these two numbers. Just have a think about that realistically. If we did now 60 times by 50, that's 3000. So you can have a general guess. And often these will simply be one mark. If you cannot follow the algorithm and see what it's doing, then just simply now go ahead and think logically. What you'll notice if you've done some work with algorithms, often these multiplication ones, one is halving while the other one is doubling. So do look at some algorithms before you carry this out and you'll start spotting now the patterns. Often it's a case that you'll be given, for example, the Fibonacci sequence, you'll be given the roots of a quadratic equation. But what we can now do is simply state that the algorithm, um, it's the product, so we can say the product of a multiple of x, y. So I'm just going to say the product x, y. So we've carried that out, we've written the output, and that's what we've got. So that's simply now implementing a basic algorithm. So let's have a go at another one. Okay, so this time we're told the diagram above, and again I've put it just here, describes an algorithm in the form of a flowchart where A is a positive integer. List P, which is referred to in the flowchart, comprises of the prime numbers 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, and so on. Starting with A is equal to 90, implement this algorithm, we need to show our workings in the table below. 
you may not need to use all the rows in this table. We're asked to explain the significance of the output list and we're asked to write down the final value of C for any initial value of A. So let's go ahead and do this one. So we've got a start. Now this doesn't look too rounded, but this now is a rounded rectangle or an oval. So we're asked to input A. So we're told to start with A is 90. So that is an instruction. So we come down here and we let B be equal to the first number in list P. The first number is 2. So now I need to let C be equal to A divided by B. A divided by B, that's going to be 90 divided by 2, which is 45. We're now asked to make a decision. Is C an integer? Well, 45 is an integer. It's a whole number. So I'm going to put in here, yes. I like to tick it, but you certainly don't have to. Y is sufficient. So now we're asked, is it an integer? So what we need to do is output B. Now, in this particular case, we've got an output list. This is our output list here, so we need to write in here B, and B is going to be 2. So the next decision we need to make is A equal to B. Well, A is 90, B is 2, so the answer is no. So I'm going to put no, it's not. So what we now do is let A be equal to C. So here's A, here's C, so I'm going to now let A be equal to to 45. We come back round. We need to let B be equal to the first number in the list P. So B again is going to be 2. We need to let C be equal to A divided by B. So what's that going to be? 22.5. And now we need to state whether C is an integer. Decision to be made. Is C an integer? The answer is no. So what we do is state that it's not an integer. So what I need to do is increase B to the next integer in list P. So what I'm going to do now is simply uh, write in here that B is going to be the next integer. Uh, so the next integer in list P is going to be 3. So we let B be equal to 3. OK, now what we need to do is go back this way and we're given the instruction to let C be equal to A divided by B. So A is 45, B is going to be 3, and we end up now with C being 15. 45 divided by 3 is 15. Is C an integer? Well, the answer is yes. 15 is an integer. So I tick that. I now need to output B. So what I'm going to do is output B, and that's going to go just here, and B is 3. We're now asked to make the decision, is A equal to B? The answer is clearly not. So I put, no, it isn't. I then am told to go this way and let A be equal to C. So A is now 15. We come back up to here. We let B be equal to the first number in the list, which is 2. We're then to see, uh, find C, which is A divided by B, which is going to be 7.5. We ask, is C an integer? The answer is no. 7.5 is not a whole number. So what we're asked to do now is increase B to the next integer in list P. So what we're going to do is increase it now from 2 to 3. So I've increased that. I now need to let C be equal to A divided by B. 15 divided by 3 is 5. We're now asked, is C an integer? Yes, it is. So we write yes and we tick. We're asked to output B. So again, I'm going to put in here B. B is 3. Is A equal to B? Well, A is 15. B is equal to 3. So the answer now is no. Hopefully, you can see what's happening here. So what we now need to do is we've let A, uh, is A equal to B? We said no, so we let A equal to C. So C is 5. A, therefore, is going to become 5. So we go back up here and we let B be equal to the first number in the list, which is 2. And then we let C be equal to A divided by B. 5 divided by 2 is 2.5. We're now asked to make the decision, is C an integer? No, 2.5 is not. So we write no. So now we need to increase B to the next integer in list P. So the next integer in list P is going to be 3. Okay, uh, 3. So we write that there. 
and we now need to let uh, c be equal to a divided by 3. So we're going to have 5 divided by 3. Is that an integer? I make that decision right here. The answer is no. So we write no. So we're now asked to increase b to the next integer in list p. So what I'm going to do is take the next one. So I've got 2 and it wasn't any good. I've got 3, it wasn't any good. So I need to increase that now to the next prime number, which in my list just here is 5. OK, so what we get now is the following. So we've increased it. We let c be equal to a divided by b. So what we're going to have then is 5 divided by 5, which is 1. We're asked now, is c an integer? Yes, it is. Good, that's what we want. We're asked to output b. Well, b is 5. We're now asked, is b or is a equal to b? So the answer is yes. OK, so what we can now write is yes, it is. So we tick yes. Is a equal to b? Well, a is 5, b is equal to 5. So we end now at this point. Now, we're asked to explain the significance of the output list. Hopefully, you can see that this has been finding the product of prime factors for our original number. So you can see here, what we're trying to do is divide these numbers each time by the next prime number in the list. And that is essentially what you're doing when you're finding the product of primes. So we say, could 90 be divided by 2? Yes, it could. It was 45. Could 45 be divided by 2? No, it couldn't. It could be divided by 3. And that will give us 15, and so on and so forth. And this now is now the product of prime factors. So what we'll say is the product, product of primes for A. And you can see all we've done is carried out that. OK, we now need to write down the final value of C for any initial value of A. This is just a one mark question, and quite clearly this is going to be 1. All you're doing now is essentially a factor tree. Therefore, write down the final value of C for any initial value of A. We can see that that's going to be 1. If we did that factor tree, we would end up down the bottom and we would simply now be having 1. So that's going to be for any of those. So there we go, implementing an algorithm using a flowchart and a trace table. As you could probably see in that one, after a while I was kind of into the flow, if you pardon the expression, of just keep going around and spending less and less time on this. But essentially this is what we should have and we should be able to spot now patterns occurring and what these are doing. The more you do, the easier it becomes.